Hey guys, Tim here, Big Dog Forge. Welcome back to the shop. It's good to see you again. So the last few videos we've done have been on the new solid fuel smithy and um, I've been a little quiet, haven't been narrating those, just wanted to give folks a shot of the smithy and what's going on. We've got another project there and uh, to answer your question, no, I have not moved out of my regular shop. Um, Scrappy and Floyd and all those guys are still intact. We just built another shop next door so that we could uh, run some solid fuel out of that and uh, that's a shop with no power tools no electricity so um, we will improve the lighting out there and the videos will change and get a little bit different uh, for that shop as well but I've got one more coming your way and we're going to light the shop so sit back relax I hope you enjoy this one and uh, we'll see you at the other end thanks guys Hey guys, really glad to have you here in the solid fuel smithy with me. Having a lot of fun in this place. You can see I got my anvil tied down now. It's not moving around like it was in the last videos. And we need to build a few different components for the project we're doing today. The first one is we're building a spike. Uh, a large nail. We're going to need it a little bit later in the video. And I do not have a nail header built yet, so we're going to head this nail in the vise. And it doesn't need much of a head on it. It's not holding two planks together. It's simply going to be driven into one of the rafters, and we'll use it as a tool later on. So the parts you see here are from a single tree, which is a component of a wagon to pull for a horse to pull around. I found an old single tree at a uh, yard sale, but it was broken, so I um, got the hardware off of it and carved out a new single tree. And this particular component, the center ring would hook to a wagon, and then the side hooks would hook to the harness, and the horse pulls on it, moves your wagon forward. And this one's made out of wrought iron, it was forge welded, I'm guessing probably turn of the century. It's pretty old. And uh, we're going to take the hook sockets and drive them on. Get them lined up correctly. And on those sockets on either end, it um, has a small hole in the socket. And they'll put a, we'll put a couple of uh, retaining pins in those. And they were blunt end pins, so we're going to use our spike to uh, create a hole for that pin to go in to get it started. And wiggle it back out, and that'll create a uh, sort of a little drill hole so our brads can go in there. I like a little nail, but they've got a blunt end. There we go. And we're going to go ahead and finish this thing in a pretty traditional way. You wanted to keep the, uh, I had banked my fire here while I was working on it. That's where you put uh, something flammable down inside and you cover up, up with coals to keep the fire burning inside while you're doing other things. And it's, uh, it's pretty handy. You can come right back fire the uh, forge back up and you're not having to restart a fire. So obviously you can see that I'm burning the wood on the outside and really what I'm doing is heating the wood and expanding the pores in the wood. And I'll do one side at a time and then we'll rub that down with beeswax. And the beeswax is melting onto the wood because of the heat as I'm going and that beeswax will sink in and protect the wood from uh, dry rot and that sort of thing decaying too quickly. We'll reheat the beeswax and we'll help that wood expand a little bit more so it gets in there and we'll wipe it down. And we'll do the other end. This is a pretty traditional way of uh, protecting a triple tree back in the day. And like I said, I believe the hardware on this thing was probably built uh, previous to the turn of the century since it was uh, hand wrought and forge welded out of wrought iron. I'm going to burn that beeswax in real good. 
and it's not that this we're not going to be using this with a wagon this is going to be for a fixture in the shop so there we go it's looking pretty good and we'll move on to our next component so we're making a hook to uh, hang that triple tree on and we're going to put a simple hook on one end and that's what the single tree will hang on to and on the other end we'll create a little larger loop and that loop will be to tie a rope to and we'll go ahead and enclose that loop Like I said, I haven't been narrating the last couple of videos. I just wanted to show folks the shop and see what I've been doing in there. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. Just kind of an intro. Let you guys absorb what's going on yourself without me yammering over it. But I thought this one needed a little bit of uh, description. I had a couple of folks say that it was a how-to video. You're not uh, explaining very well how-to, so... <laughs> Well, we'll get that sorted. And the lighting will get better um, as we figure out the uh, video camera and the lighting that's needed in the shop. So, But other than that, there will be no electricity in the shop. It's going to be pretty much a uh, something that you would have worked in a couple of hundred years ago. We will build a trip hammer. Uh, foot operated and a foot operated grinder uh, I've got one to rebuild that will go into the shop but no power tools I'm going to take a little bit of a step back in time okay we're creating a couple of long hooks to stabilize this uh, single tree And you'll see how those are used here in a minute. And these are all out of mild steel. And I got the horn a little off camera there for those two hooks, but you see the left side is open-ended and the uh, right side is a regular hook. All right, we need to build one more hook, that is. And we're going to build a drive-in hook, something that you drive into the wall. And uh, we'll be tying the other end of our rope to this drive-in hook. It'll be our anchor. And like I said, the filming will get better in this shop as I get more used to it and the lighting gets better and that kind of thing. So bear with me. Not exactly getting everything in focus and on camera, but we'll, uh, we'll get there. All right. And we'll take it to the vise and we'll just give it a 90 degree bend, something that we can drive into the wall. We're not going to give it any twists or anything fancy. It's very utilitarian. I'll be building several items for the uh, new smithy. And they'll all be uh, very utilitarian like this. Not a lot of frills to them. And they're all in support of you, you know, doing the work in the shop rather than... Uh, you know, fancy stuff for someone else. All right, so let's put this thing together. We've got our spike we made in the beginning. I'm gonna drive it into this rafter up here. And this is the barn pulley that we made in the last video. That would be something like you would haul hay up into the barn with. And we've got some sisal rope. It's uh pretty traditional stuff and we're going to cut that to length 
and now we've got our hook you can't see this very well I'm a little off camera but this is the hook that we made with the open-ended hook on one end and the loop on the other and that's uh, what the single tree will be hanging from this is our drive-in hook We'll drive it all the way through and we'll bend it over on the other side like a staple there we go and we're just going to put a loop in this down low so we can work on it now here's our single tree and these are our little stabilizer hooks to keep it balanced you might say all right we're going to hook some other items up to it here Now these are, uh, I believe, Diaz or Diaz, something like that, oil lanterns. They are, have been building these since 1849, they say. And uh, they're full size. They come without paint, so they'll get a nice rust patina on them. And this is going to be our lighting fixture for the uh, forge. So there you go, guys. Appreciate you watching. If you like what you saw, like, share, subscribe, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks, guys. Take care. Be safe.